Yeah, and Aaron, I'm excited about this topic. Uh, you, uh, guilty as charged. I am a big <laughs> advocate of a hygiene-driven practice. Uh, Dr. Omer Reed, uh, very early in my career, impressed that upon me. And I remember Omer telling me, Gary, always remember um, that uh, uh, the hygiene department is a very, very, very important part of a successful practice. And he said it with such conviction. Uh, I understood it intellectually. Uh, and it, 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 it made an impact on me from the very beginning, but, uh, I understand it even more so now, um, hygiene is, 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 is critically important. Um, you know, uh, I can talk about the numbers, you know, why it can affect your practice, uh, positive from, from a numerical way, from financial way. Uh, but maybe the best way to talk about it is that, um, having a strong hygiene department and, and training our patients to keep their hygiene appointments will help your patients be healthier will help them. I like to say, Naren, if you were the patient, Naren, if, if, if we can get you committed to keeping a regular schedule of hygiene appointments, we're going to accomplish two things. We're going to keep you as healthy as possible, and we're going to reduce your future dental expenses because we could find things at the earliest stage and treat it as conservatively as possible before it becomes a bigger problem. That's why it's so important uh, for you to be regular about keeping your hygiene appointments. Naren, does that make sense? Absolutely. I think, um, I mean, I- What's I, every I patient going to say? Yeah, uh, of course. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I live this, right? I mean, the beauty of the dental business model, especially a hygiene-driven practices, you have a relationship and a touch point that's lifelong, but it's happening every six months, every three months, depending on the you know, condition of the you're patient. Hope, you're hopefully, uh, every time you interact with the patient, uh, the connection that you have deepens. Exactly. And it deepens to the point where they would never consider going anywhere else, you know, because you have all the history and you have all the background and you care about them and they feel it. Uh, yeah. The other point that I like to make about a hygiene driven practice is that uh, you also, you know, Naren, that I'm a fan of um, having our listeners add high value services to their menu of services that they provide. 100%. Place, placing restoring implants, uh, adult orthodontics, cosmetic dentistry, complex restorative dentistry, treating uh, obstructive sleep apnea with appliance therapy, for example. Any of those could, could be good examples of high value dentistry. And there's other examples. But we often find that for those high value services, some people are ready right now to have those done and they're ready. Um, others, we can plant seeds with and cultivate those seeds you know, throughout their visits to our practice. And then we're ready when they're ready. A, a really good example of that, Naren, is cosmetic dentistry, say doing a smile design. And maybe in the very initial appointment, the patient says they are interested in improving their smile. And we treatment plan, you know, a smile design, a, a, maybe a 10 unit upper anterior porcelain veneer case. But if the timing may not be just right for that patient right then, uh, there's no urgency on their part. They'd like to have it done, but there's no urgency. But if we can see that patient, you know, let's assume they have healthy gums every six months, then we can periodically revisit their thinking about that uh, smile design. Uh, and then at some point, very often the patient will say, to you, Hey, I'm ready to have that done doctor. And oftentimes there's a, a some term external event in their life. Um, you know, maybe they have a big, um, anniversary coming up, uh, maybe a, a, a daughter's wedding is coming up and they want to look their best for the daughter's wedding, or maybe they're changing careers or changing their jobs into something that is more customer facing. And now all of a sudden their appearance is more important. Um, and so by keeping them in your practice and keeping them engaged and keeping the connection, you're going to do that dentistry. It's just a matter of timing. Another, another reason why um, uh, hygiene driven practice is, is, is so important. Well, I want to begin with the, the Stephen Covey concept of begin with the end in mind. And I want to set a benchmark for you. And the benchmark is um, a thriving practice will fill 92% or more of the available hygiene appointments in any given time period, 92% or more. Now, Nair, why do you think I didn't say 100%? I mean, I think you have experience and you know that is not a goal that uh, most it's people- It's not realistic. Accomplish. Yeah, it's not realistic. Yeah. It's not realistic. Yeah. Um, and 92% and fill, that would mean, you know, I'm just going to use a very uh, a simple example. Let's say you had 100 available hygiene appointments for the month. Um, at the end of the month, if we ended up with 92 of those appointments being filled with a butt in the seat, 
not filled and then they change, but filled with a butt in the seat, uh, then that's an A on the report card. Yes. And, and I want to state that that 92% is a very high standard, Darren. Very difficult, not easy to do. No, nothing easy about that at all. I'd almost call it like Olympic level performance, you know, like the Olympics. Uh, however, it's entirely possible because I can point to our clients and I can show you where they're getting it month after month after month. That's why we call this proven tips. To keep your hygiene schedule filled because this has been proven, uh, not only in Life Smiles, but in our client offices as well.